Hello friends, this video on microorganisms, friend and foe, part 11 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now let us talk about the next useful application of microorganisms that is in the beverages. Now as I was telling that it also helps in the preparation of alcohol. So let us see how microorganisms will help us to prepare alcohol. Yeasts play an important role in the production of various alcoholic drinks. So when you talk about alcoholic drinks, it could be beer, whiskey. So make, there are many different types of drinks which are available. And yeasts again play a very important role in their preparation. So let us see how yeasts uh, play a role there. So the, commonly the yeast which is used for this purpose is Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Now as I was telling before also, this yeast is also used as a raising agent in most of the bakery items. So this yeast is often called as the brewer's yeast because of its application in preparation of alcohol and as a raising agent. So it is often termed as the brewer's yeast. So let us see how the process of alcohol formation takes place. So let us now learn about the process of alcoholic fermentation. So this process is also known as ethanol fermentation that is because the product here is ethanol. And what is ethanol? It is C2H5OH. Ethanol is an alcohol and in this process ethanol is produced and that is how alcohol is produced. So what happens in this process? The yeast Saccharomyces cerevisiae, it ferments the fruit juices and malted cereals. So basically what will the fruit juice or the malted cereal made up of? So the malted cereal will contain the sugar called maltose. Similarly, if you talk about the fruit juices, they will contain fructose, sucrose. So these kind of molecules like fructose or sucrose or maltose, all these are sugars. So all these sugar molecules, they get converted into ethanol and carbon dioxide and a lot of energy is released during the process. So what happens is yeast perform this process or this conversion in absence of oxygen and that is why it is called fermentation. So fermentation Fermentation always happens. Fermentation is basically an aerobic respiration and it always happens in absence of oxygen. Whereas aerobic respiration happens in presence of oxygen. Now in fermentation what will happen? All these sugar molecules whether it is fructose or maltose or sucrose or lactose or any kind of um, uh, sugar molecules they are either disaccharide or polysaccharides so end of the day they all are made up of simple sugar and simple sugar is glucose so C6H12O6 this is glucose so sugar gets converted into ethanol that is C2H5OH plus carbon dioxide so this is how the balanced reaction will be and this entire conversion happens in presence of an enzyme called zymase. So this enzyme what it does it actually helps in the conversion of this reaction and this entire process who makes this entire process possible this entire post process is made possible by the yeast saccharomyces cerevisiae. So now this carbon dioxide which is produced here, this production of carbon dioxide helps this yeast to act as a raising agent because the carbon dioxide helps in the formation of bubbles and it also raises the dough. So that's how uh, this yeast is used as a raising agent. And this ethanol which is produced here helps in the preparation of alcohol. So it is the same process where both the products are formed alcohol as well as carbon dioxide. So this is how alcohol fermentation takes place. Now this alcoholic fermentation also takes place on a commercial scale. So when we want to commercially produce a lot of alcohol, so that cannot happen in a small laboratory. So for that fermentation plants have been set up. So in the picture you can see this is how a fermentation plant looks like. 
so here fermenters are used for large scale production of microbes because you need large amount of microbes as well little amount of yeast will not help you to produce a lot of alcohol so the greater amount of alcohol you want is the greater amount of yeast that you will have to provide so in order to produce so much of yeast or so much of microbes you need fermenters which can produce so much of microbes so this is how fermenters look like so they are like big tanks inside which a lot of microbes can be grown and then these microbes help in the conversion of sugars into alcohol So you can carry out this small experiment experiment on fermentation in your school laboratory if the facilities are provided there. So what you can do is you can actually see the process of conversion of sugar into alcohol. This is called fermentation and it happens in absence of oxygen. So normally the word anaerobic respiration and fermentation are used interchangeably because theoretically it refers to absence of oxygen. However, in this simple experiment, it is not that you have to create anaerobic conditions. Even in presence of oxygen, you can see how sugar gets converted into alcohol. So what you do, you take a beaker and, beaker and take some water in it. Now you add some amount of sugar into the water. Now what you do, now you add some amount of yeast into the sugar solution. So now you have yeast, you also have sugar. So what we know in fermentation, yeast will convert sugar into alcohol. Now as soon as you added the yeast, now you give some time for fermentation to take place. For that purpose, you cover it with a lid and leave it undisturbed for quite some time. Now after some time what you will see is the entire solution, the sugar solution which was white in color gradually turns reddish. That is due to the formation of ethanol that is alcohol. So this is how you can see how sugar gets converted into alcohol by yeast. So not only antibiotics and uh, the alcohol, there are many other chemicals which are useful to us in different ways which are prepared by microorganisms. Now several chemicals are produced by microbes, for example organic acids, enzymes, alcohol. So these are some of the chemicals which are produced by microbes. So now let us quickly see some of the microbes which produce organic acids. We have already looked at some of the acids which are produced by microbes. For example, lactic acid, acetic acid. So let us see. For example, lactobacillus which is present in curd. It helps in producing lactic acid. That's what it does. It converts the lactose sugar present in milk into lactic acid. And this lactic acid makes the milk turn sour. And that's why curd is sour. So this is one uh, microbe which produces an acid. Acetobacter aceti, this is another microbe which produces acetic acid. So this is a bacteria which produces acetic acid. What is acetic acid? It is nothing but vinegar. So I hope all of you now understand what is vinegar. Clostridium bathylicum, this is another bacteria which produces bathyric acid. Aspergillus niger, it produces citric acid, citric acid which is commonly found in lemons and the citrus fruits. So citric acid can be produced by this fungi, Aspergillus niger. So these are some of the microbes which can produce organic acids. Now let us look at some microbes which produce alcohol. Just now we spoke about alcoholic fermentation, right? So we saw there that yeast produces alcohol. So the yeast which is used for alcoholic fermentation is Saccharomyces cerevisiae which is also known as the brewer's yeast because it is also used for baking purpose and also for alcoholic preparation. So this yeast it produces ethanol which is C2H5OH and during this process it also produces carbon dioxide and due to the production of carbon dioxide this yeast acts as a raising agent in bakery industry. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.